I, I think we're in good shape. And um, it's, it's such a pleasure to have you all with me here today. We're talking about something today that is really the most challenging area of, of reproductive endocrinology of infertility. There we go. Okay, I think we have it now. So this is the most challenging of all areas of infertility and it's the area that matters most to me. And uh, quite likely all of you understand exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, when you see a specialist, when you talk to someone, they tell you that you have low ovarian reserve, that you have a low AMH, you have a low antral follicle count. We'll discuss all these things later. And what happens when you do an IVF cycle is you get very few eggs and they're low quality. And so you get very few embryos. And then when they're tested, they're all genetically abnormal. And then you get no implantation or if you get an implantation, then you get a miscarriage. So it's really, really tough. And I've met so many women that fall into this category and they're wonderful women. And I know that they would be amazing mothers. And um, I work every day to improve the chance that these women can succeed because I know how excellent they would be if they did succeed. So ovarian rejuvenation involves using the woman's blood. It's, it's, we're not using anything from anyone else. We're not using any pharmaceuticals, any medications, anything like that. It's the woman's own blood. And the blood is absolutely amazing when you think about it. It carries oxygen and it carries the nutrients uh, throughout the body. It also moves hormones and many, many other things. It's also involved in the renewal of cells and tissues. If you think about it, all of our tissues are being regenerated at all times. And the factors that control and stimulate that, many of them are in the blood. When they're activated, they can be activated by an injury, for example, they release many growth factors. And these growth factors, one of the things that they do is they stimulate stem cells to grow and develop. And the stem cells are critically important because it's actually the stem cells that then become the various cells that are needed to uh, repair the injury. And one of the other important things that these growth factors do from platelets is they actually stimulate the growth of new blood vessels in the area. If you think about cutting your arm, one of the things that gets cut are blood vessels. And so those things need to be recreated. So it's actually the platelets that control this entire process. Now, when a platelet goes to an area of injury and it's activated, it releases numerous factors. And I've just listed a few of these factors here on the right. So this is a platelet, it's activated. It has little areas, they're called alpha granules inside that release these factors in an area of injury. And then these, these factors here can affect ovarian stem cells and affect the egg in other ways. And so one of the potential effects of, of platelets is, is based on the idea that over the last 10, 15 years, we've come to understand, there's much more evidence to support the idea that there are ovarian stem cells and these ovarian stem cells, they can actually become eggs. And so one of our thoughts in this, and we don't know how often it happens, is that these growth factors that are released from the platelets may actually start the process of creating eggs. And this is uh, ovarian stem cells here and creating eggs and then they become mature. It's not critical, but it may well be a part of why this works so well. Here. This is an overview. We collect the blood, we put it into a centrifuge and you can see that there's a separation of various components of the blood and then the PRP is isolated and injected. If you look at blood, about 55% of blood is plasma, is liquid. And then the cells are 45%. So when you, there's several different ways of isolating different components of blood, but when you do it in a typical way, almost all of the cells are red blood cells. There's only about 1% of cells that are either white blood cells or are platelets. And so, this is a very nice slide that shows you the relative percentage. So this is plasma, 
this is the platelets and white blood cells. And here we have the red blood cells. And you can see what the various cells look like, at least schematically here. All right, now this shows you exactly how we do it. And so if you look here, you'll see the ultrasound probe and there's a needle guide on the ultrasound probe. And you can see that this probe is facing the ovary. And here you can see the PRP that's in the syringe. And so the PRP is injected into the ovary by following this path here. Now this is a close up of the ovary and we don't want to inject this into follicles and that's what these structures are here. We want to inject it into an area of the ovary that has no follicles. These are areas of the ovary, ovaries that are going to create follicles in the future. So we created generation two ovarian rejuvenation uh, here at Gen 5. And what it's done is roughly double the percentage of women who respond. See, not all women respond. We don't know exactly why. I'll give you some ideas later. But uh, the percentage that do respond is almost twice as high using generation two. Now, once again, it uses, it uses no anesthesia. It's all underdone. It's all done under ultrasound guidance. We use very thin needles. That's one of the reasons there's minimal discomfort. Uh, also as part of generation two, we started using enriched platelet factors, which is a different way of injecting these substances. So let's discuss PRP versus the enriched platelet factors. And so as you know by now, you're now experts on this. We take platelets, we activate the platelets, we use calcium to do that, and then we inject them into each ovary. Now, when we do the enriched platelet factors therapy, we do something a little bit different. We take the platelets, we activate the platelets, and then we place them in an incubator. And we do this for a couple of hours. And during that time, the platelets release growth factors. And at the end of that time, what we do is uh, we, we actually isolate the growth factors. We don't take the platelets, only the growth factors. And then we inject the growth factors into each ovary. There's only one study that's been done comparing the PRP to the enriched platelet factors. And what it found was on average, the concentration of growth factors was 15 times higher when we use this technique, the technique where we isolate the growth factors as opposed to injecting the platelets. Now, you would think that it would be obvious that the enriched uh, platelet factor therapy would be better, but it's not. And, and the reason is that when you inject platelets, what happens is they continue to release growth factors for some time after they're injected. But when you release the uh, growth factors, then they do their thing and then they're metabolized. And so right now we are doing a comprehensive study comparing PRP to the growth factor therapy and we plan on publishing that probably in September or October of this year.